stay black in America, don't leave, don't go anywhere, greatest country for a black man or a black woman. Ancestors have been to slavery, reconstruction, all types of redlining, Jim Crow, racism, all types of things that hold you back from rising, achieving, and living out the, you know, the greatness of your life. So uh, today's going to be the 16th of sermon. Uh, it's going to be about prayer. So a definition in a regular dictionary for prayer is a, a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. Solemn, solemn, like, you know, formal and dignified. That's what it says, right? Dignified. Well, let me tell you what the Bible actually tells you about prayer. The Bible tells you that prayer, you should pray with supplication and thanksgiving to God. Supplication is interpreted as begging. So you got to beg, earnestly humble and begging that God would answer your prayers. See, someone that earnestly begs and, and humbles themselves believe that God is who he is. Someone who wants to be dignified is just shooting words up in the air that really don't believe God is who he says he is because how can you claim to be dignified and praying to your God and God is telling you he wants you to pray to him in supplication and earnestly and thanksgiving. He wants you to humble yourselves. Greatest in the kingdom of heaven is, is going to be those who humble themselves like little children. Those who are servants of all are greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So how can you think you're dignified? You're going to come to God after something in prayer. You're that dignified. What are you coming to God for? So you can answer your own prayers. Only if, you know, almost like someone thinking they can save themselves. They didn't they need Jesus Christ. But well, God had to send his son as a prerequisite for you to go to heaven. He died for the sins of the world. So because we couldn't save ourselves. So Jesus Christ died for us. The Son of God came and died for us and rose again and then lives forever and ever. You know? So that's the only way we, we, we can go to heaven, by grace. We, we can't earn our way to heaven. So all these various things that people are falling through and by. But let me tell you, the most important thing about prayer, I want, you, I, want you to, I want your prayers to be answered. So I'm praying to God. You got to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And faith, again, it's like begging or earnestly hoping or getting on your knees and begging God. That means you believe who, you, who you're praying to. You don't think it's a game or a toy. You, 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 you're praying because you want your prayers to be answered. You're not being dignified. Well, I'll just put it there. If God answers, it's fine. You're begging and doing what God told you to do because that more than, than shows evidence you believe in who you're praying to. Okay, so a lot of religions in the world, a lot of faith in the world, man, it's crazy how many things they are. You know, man's reaching to something. Whether he's, whether he's got an idol, whether he's got a little, uh, 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 some little puppy little thing walking there, or he monkeys, or, or he's trying to get luck out of a string or something. I mean, you know, it's all kind of stuff people people believe in. But uh, I guess they grew up like that, man. So we can't blame them. Right? We know in the Bible, God has talked to all kind of people, all kind of ethnic races. He's uh, talked to them. Led them to doing the correct thing. So I don't think anybody is, is, is exempt from God actually talking to you and telling you about prayer. But prayer, man, is um, b believing in what you believing in what you're going to receive before you even before you even start praying. Trusting in God, you know, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Know that God sent Him here to die on our behalf, so that all men, everybody, all the ethnics in the whole world, the seven billion or eight billion of us, can all go to heaven. It's already lined up for us. But if we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and repent of our sins, then we're going to heaven. So it's your heart. God's going to look at your heart. You know how technology is. You know, you can, you can be in out, out of space and look at a license plate tag. You you can see everything going. Well, God surpasses our knowledge, man, infinitely. I mean, you know, we can't even imagine how. Like I said once before, uh, to go to the Milky Way is, is 187 years at the speed of light. We don't have that kind of technology. Either. God can go back and forth time if you like. <laughs> right? Created all that. Made all that. You know? Know the boundaries. Know, know the structures. Know everything. We, we don't know that kind of stuff, man. So, prayer. Again, believe in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's your first prerequisite when you go to God. You ask God to, 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 to ask you these prayers. You're praying. You're begging. You're earnestly believing. You, you're humbling yourself. You ask for God to, to answer your prayers. Whatever prayers you need to be answered, whatever things you want to get out. You're not asking some vain thing. You're not asking to fly like a bird. You're not asking to have the strength of an elephant, I hope. I mean, so you're not asking like vain things, crazy things. But you're asking things that are pertinent to your life. Everybody wants their family to be healthy. Everybody wants their family to have a long life. Everybody wants to have income and money they can do what they want to do. Everybody wants to be treated fairly. Everybody wants to live in a nice place. Everybody, nobody wants no crime to be persecuted or suffering. 
Nobody wants that. So we're basically praying for all humankind, basically praying for the same thing. You're not going to pray to kill all your enemies like I guess the Jews did at one time, wanted Christ to come as a conqueror and destroy our enemies, but he came as something greater. He came as one to deliver you from your sins so that everybody from whatever generation can be saved and go to heaven, be reunited with, with, with God again. So that's what prayer is, man. Come to God and pray like that because you, you bow down seven times a day and you're praying to, you're, you're praying to something that's it's not in accordance with, with God's thing, because God, God prefers loyalty to a sacrifice and acknowledge Him to burn offerings. So, He prefers that, man. So you read that Bible, you study, you meditate on it, you pray. So many verses in the Bible speaking about prayer, praying, uh, the things that God answers. How you reach prayer to God? I mean, it speaks about principalities, evil things, trying to hold back your prayers. Some prayers are going to be answered quickly, some not going to be answered quickly. But it all boils down to faith. I mean, if you got a little child and they come into my candy store and they're begging for candy, my goes, oh, I'm praying, they're crying and crying and crying. In some cases, the parent will get them that candy. In some cases, the parent won't. Doesn't mean the parent don't love them. Don't mean the parent didn't hear them, didn't hear their request. This means that the parent decided to give and not to give, to answer the prayers accordingly. So, you never give it that begging, never give it a humbling yourself, never give it a the thankfulness when you're praying, believing that what you pray for is going to come true. Because God knows your heart. He knows everything about you. You know what you need, the time you need it. You might want something, and, and it might be better if you get that prayer a year from there, not now, because you got it a year from there. Maybe you don't have the, the means to hold on to it. Maybe some income might come to you, but you don't have the means to hold on to the income. Maybe a, a move to a better location is on your way to a job, and you don't have the means to get there right now. So. Everything is a course. You know, like in the Bible where, where people earnestly pray for people to be delivered re re from prison. And sometimes the prison gates were miraculously open. Gods fell asleep or dissipated. And the person walked out in freedom. Well, you can't kind of like do that now. It's, it's a big, it's a new world. So it's a lot of paperwork. So if you walk, if God opened all the prisons up and you walk in, the first thing it is, it recapture you again. How do you get out of there? Recapture them again. What's going on? You know, so it's a different thing. And then you can walk out of prison and go somewhere else in another region. We'll live a hundred more years and nobody be able to find you. But now you can pretty much find anybody know where they are. So it's the certain paper trail you have to have now. So if God gonna get you out of prison now, it's gonna be a paper trail he's gonna fix. It's gonna be somebody vouching for you. It's gonna be somebody saying that we think he's rehabilitated. It's gonna be somebody saying, Oh, I got a job from somewhere. Somebody somebody's gonna be coming to your aid and pray with another way and then the same doors open for you and freedom is yours, but it's another way. It's not like old timey way. You know, or, or people were raised from, or Jesus raised people from the dead, you know, and, uh, and he healed. He made, made uh, shriveled up arms and stuff grow back. He healed leprosy, you know, leprosy, you know, the thing you can't, you, there's no cure for it. He healed that leprosy. I mean, all manner of things that he did. He walked and healed and did things and fed people with two loaves of bread. I prayed to God and the basket kept being filled with food. The same way, I guess, when God delivered, when Moses delivered the Jewish people out of the hands of Pharaoh and and, and manna came down from, 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 from the sky, like, like, like wheat or like flour. They could fix and make bread and eat it, you know. They, they got upset with that, and he sent a bunch of uh, flocks of uh, pheasants, I think, over there. And they ate so much pheasant, they got sick because he was disappointed and crying and complaining about things. So God don't like that, that complaining too much. He likes you to deal with adversity. You know, you got to deal with some kind of adversity. He's pleasing that. So when the Bible says you understand God, you know, you got to um, know that God refers loyalty, you know, to sacrifice and knowledge from the burn offerings, understand, learn about God. God is telling you about Himself all the time. You know, back in the day, God destroyed the whole world. You know, Noah's time. Everybody he said He's disappointed the man He has made. Every thought of man's heart was even wicked. He destroyed everybody. Yeah, through Noah's family, the world recreated again. Right? Everybody born and doing things again. You know, so God wants all of us to go to heaven, man. And again, I keep saying, for it's by grace, not by our works. Don't say you're gonna work your way in there. I'm gonna do this now. We do our works on earth. When you're feeding the poor, when you're even putting clothes on people that's homeless, when you're helping people, uh, uh, doing things for them, man, uh, helping widows and orphans, God takes great pleasure in that because God said, if you've done it to the least of me, you've done it unto me. Saying all this, beating around the bush, saying a lot of kind of things, but basically prayer. You, you, you stand up or you get on your knees, you pray to God, you, you beg to God, you, you really want God to answer his prayer for you, you come to him humbly. You have thanksgiving that his prayers are going to be answered, man. You put your prayers up to God. God knows you're suffering. God is looking for you to pray to him, man. God wants to hear your prayer. He enjoys your prayer. He enjoys your worship. So stay black in America. Don't go anywhere. Pray correctly to God. Receive those prayers and uh, live in this great abundant country we have here. A Christian country. We live in America. We've been through a lot of sufferings, but we're here. We live better than uh, probably 95% of the world. Probably, you know, <laughs> the people in the world live here. We don't even, some of us live in poverty. Think we. Impoverished, we're impoverished here, 
But if you go over someplace else, you, you think you, you you think you're a king over there because they don't have central air conditioning and central heat and, and 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 floors and food coming to them. Huge supermarkets, man. They gotta go hunt some stuff. Barefooted walk around. Can't see a decent doctor, man. Believe me, if somebody tell you to leave America and go somewhere else, they don't have your better benefits. So this is the 16th, this is the 17th sermon, prayer. God bless you.